And welcome to another Results Rules OK podcast. And joining me today, a very good friend, colleague of mine uh, from over in Germany, now based in Luxembourg, a gentleman called Dirk Sanden, who calls himself, or is known as, in fact, rather than calls himself, the Enlightened Accountants. So, Dirk, welcome to the call. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, David. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Good, good. Welcome. I think if anybody listening in uh, knew uh, the last uh, 45 minutes we've gone through to get the technology to work, they'd be quite, they'd be quite impressed with it, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's always amazing uh, how, how, how you can struggle with just setting up a microphone. <laughs> exactly. We'll, 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 blame, we'll blame Brexit as everything else is being blamed on Brexit, so that's what we can do for that. <laughs> So, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Dirk, appreciate your time. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, for those people maybe who, who don't know of you or haven't uh, come across you, um, give us a sort of an overview. Uh, who's who's Dirk Sandon? Tell us all about Dirk. Yeah. You thank thank you, David. Uh, you you said it already. Uh, uh, my name is Dirk Sandon. Uh, in the meantime, I'm also known as as the enlightened accountant and uh, founder of the project Your Lighthouse Journey. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, something that is really close to my heart. Uh, this this project it's all all around um, how to uh, how to set up a, a life which is uh, abundant, which is and uh, I would I would call myself a student of uh, value based living actually. Mm -hmm. And. Um, what I mean, we probably a lot of people have heard this, this ex expression in a little bit of different context when it comes uh, more from the from the business environment, where we like to uh, talk about um, value based management mm -hmm. and the, the meaning of, of value in this context is, of course, slightly different uh, compared to when I'm talking about value based living, mm -hmm. because my values that I'm talk talking about are less um, financially driven or materially driven. My values are really from from the, let's say, the, the foundation uh, of, of life mm -hmm. uh, in terms of values like um, transparency, honesty, integrity, those, those kind of things where I'm really deeply convinced that uh, we should spend much more time on on questions like uh, what what matters to you, what matters uh, to uh, the society, and how we can all, let's say, uh, work together and um, yeah, and, and collaborate uh -huh. that are based on a strong strong set of uh, um, base values. This is this is quite shocking for an, for an accountant or a, a recovering <laughs> accountant to think in these terms of of not purely um, financials, <laughs> ratios, margins, and balance sheets. So yeah. So, so, uh, because you did start out as a, you were or are, sorry, you you started out as a as a high flying accountant working in um, the, the the big financial auditing firms, didn't you? Yeah, I, I probably I it had it had to come like this. Probably I had to come or start off like in like an accounting accountant following, uh, let's say the 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 normal rules. That's called the rules of the society. And uh, well, uh, it is a bit contradictory on the one hand to be an accountant and then having this kind of um, tipping point in life or the, the awakening and having this experience that there is apparently a bit more behind life than just uh, number crunching, uh, juggling numbers and uh, doing debits and credits. Uh, <laughs> it, there's more to life than balance sheets, really? Are, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I, it, 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 it came really as a surprise to me, but uh, Finally, in hindsight, I can confirm there is a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's reassuring, I think, for, for all of us. And, and, and just quickly, I, and you, you, tell, you told me before, I know because we know each other really well, just explain just br briefly how you became to, how, how you chose your accounting uh, training rather than, I think it was marketing was the other option. Just because this may resonate with a lot of people, I think, in terms of you know, key decisions that are made in life. So just how did you sort of fall into the accountancy um, business? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit interesting. The way I, I, I got here uh, is probably m more a kind of um, wake up period compared to a, a wake up call or a very dramatic tipping point in my life mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a period actually and I 
as you said, we, we, we on a regular basis, we are standing at a crossroad uh, in life and we have to make a decision. Yeah. And these decisions, we, we know that these decisions have an impact on our lives for for a couple of years, uh, the really important ones. Yes. And the, the one that I that I like to uh, to talk about is or is when when I was in in uh, university, mm -hmm. I still remember I was I, I just passed the the bachelor bachelor degree, and I had to make up my mind. So what's what's the subject for my master studies? Mm -hmm. And I found myself. It was a it was a beautiful uh, summer day in in Nuremberg, where I studied. I found myself standing there in the in the university in this this big foyer, this this huge hall, uh, where I had to subscribe for for uh, for the next well for the next two three years mm -hmm. uh, the the matters that I wanted to to study, and I, I I found myself in that huge hall, standing actually in the middle of of two doors. Uh, li literally two doors, and on the on the left hand side there was the door towards accountancy, audit, controlling, uh, tax matters. You know all these fancy stuff that everybody is really really uh, li likes likes to do. It sounds it, it um, sounds thrilling. It sounds exciting. I can I'm, I can barely control myself. Yeah, yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> thrilling exactly. And, and on the on the right hand side there was there was a door towards marketing and communication and all that fancy stuff oh, how, um, how dull so you so i really i really was standing literally in between these two doors and i uh, had, had to make up my mind so what's uh, what actually what i what i will do for let's say the next couple of years not only from the study perspective but also then uh, how i will start my my work life mm -hmm. and my career and uh, interesting on the left hand side believe it or not the door towards accountancy and all that stuff there was no queue. Can you imagine? <laughs> how, how surprising! <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas the door to the to the right hand side, towards marketing and communication, there was hundreds, really hundreds of <laughs> students uh, queuing. So and I was standing really in the middle, and I I said, "What does that mean?" I mean, I I I, I thought to myself, well. And, and have in mind, it was a beautiful summer day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know the, the the southern part of Germany. At least what you should know is that they have fantastic beer gardens. Uh, yes, I and, make no comment, but I do understand. Somebody told me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I thought, hmm, I can go to the left side, and I just go there. I subscribe, and five minutes later, I can join my friends that are already waiting for me in the beer garden. <laughs> Or I can queue for hours on the right hand side, um, and yeah, and then I'm only even allowed to to subscribe for for a test that will, will allow me probably if I pass the test to start these studies. Mm -hmm. So now I was standing there. Okay, there was I had a really this this fight between uh, the, my rational mind and my heart because of course rational mind said, well. Left hand, five minutes out to the beer garden. Exactly. <laughs> on the right, on the right hand side, hours and hours of waiting, and not even, and even after having been uh, um, uh, subscribed there, it was not even clear whether I'm allowed uh, to join uh, these <laughs> these studies. Um, and that was and that was pr probably something that resonates with a lot of people because we have on a regular basis a decision to make, and often. Uh, it is our rational mind that is taking over, and we we find ourselves in these situations where we're doing uh, pros and cons, and then we are analyzing, and then we are making a decision. So clearly, in, 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 back then, my heart was actually more tending towards the right side, yeah. whereas my brain simply said, "My friend, you go to the left hand side." Uh, also, not only because of the beer garden, <laughs> but <laughs> But also that when you're getting out of university with your with your degree uh, being a, a master of business administration, mm -hmm. uh, you're not competing with anyone because you studied accountancy and tax. Whereas when you're going to the right hand door, uh, then you're competing with hundreds of other people. So that was, <laughs> so that, that was actually the 
this this story of decision making, and <laughs> that's why and that's why I ended up with uh, uh, as an accountant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I and also to be to be clear, um, I'm, I I don't regret that step sure. because I, I, I like numbers, I like number crunching. So it's, that's all fine, and it all belongs to uh, my life and how I, I grew and and developed. Uh, so that's I, the point is more probably in the hindsight being a little bit wiser than I was um, well d decades ago I have to say uh, I I would say it sometimes it's also good to find the right balance between listening to your brain and your rational mind and your heart uh, and I think this is this project your lighthouse journey is also a little bit about that and uh, more uh, connecting a bit more to let's say the, the wise part of of our of our bodies and and trust them a bit more yeah um and um it it is for me it's a little bit like when we are too much listening to um uh, to to the brain it is not necessarily bringing us the best results sure um because i i really i'm really convinced that uh, the more we trust ourselves and uh, we are listening uh, to our, let's say, uh, inner wisdom that we all have, mm -hmm. uh, the better the decision making is and uh, the the happier the life is that we're actually uh, leading. Sure. So so you went from, uh, just a picture in my mind, you, you, you go from a um, a, a beer drinking trainee accountant, <laughs> or beer liking. <laughs> no, be, be careful, be careful. A beer liking a trainee accountant. You qualify, <laughs> and, and then, and, and I know then you've had this. You had a, you know, have and having, uh, and continue to have a fabulous career at the very sort of you know, top of your game, working with some large organisations, and you go from there to becoming and and you're, you're discovering the, the enlightened accountants, and then developing. So the, your, the lighthouse journey, your lighthouse journey. How did how did that happen? How did you go from you know, accountant through to your lighthouse journey? What uh, what was the what was the process? Yeah, I had a I had a kind of well, you you, you said it right. So I, I started my my career as being an accountant, and I uh, I, I continued. Actually, I started my career in one of the big big four companies. This is uh -huh. what we're doing, and then I continued. Uh, changed a couple a couple of times my job. Now I'm here in Luxembourg, uh, very very happy. I'm working in the financial industry as a relationship manager and business developer. So that's all that's all good. It is all great. So no no reason to, to complain. Sure. But but still, a couple of years ago, so three three four years ago, um, something something happened. And as I said, it was probably not a, a real tipping point or a dramatic event. It was more a period. And this during this period, I I heard. This little little voice in the back of my mind uh, that is somehow telling me that that there's that there must be a bit more than just um, uh, going to work every day, commuting, mm -hmm. uh, spending your your eight ten hours uh, in in a, in a more or less predefined job, going back and doing this for 30, 40 years until you uh, you are you're retired. Mm -hmm. And this this voice was always there, um, but it was very low. I mm -hmm. couldn't really understand. I, in the beginning, for sure, I didn't even allow myself to listen a bit closer. Yeah. But a couple of years ago, this voice was getting simply louder, mm -hmm. and I was probably also ready to listen a bit closer to what this voice is saying. Interesting. And, um, Inter I think that that sorry that little comment that, that you made there. I think it happens for you know for all of us and for other uh, maybe other people as well. Being uh, ready to listen uh, rather than yeah. the, the, the mute is a is a is a good point. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is what I, I I literally found myself at one morning uh, before the the rest of the house was awake. I, I found myself sitting there on a on our uh, a diner table. And I was thinking about my life, and I was wondering uh, whether I have done something wrong. <laughs> and while I was thinking about it, somehow this this idea of of a contract popped up in my mind. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a contract that 
um, think about it, David. You are you are born, and the moment you are born, you are signing a contract with a society. Mm, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this and and the the contract reads a little bit like this. Um, so when when David uh, plays according to the rules of the society, which are and the rules of the society are uh, explained in more detail in paragraph one of this contract, <laughs> uh, then the society will grant David uh, a successful life, and success mm -hmm. is defined in paragraph two of this contract. <laughs> And I, I really saw myself, in, I had my, the, I, I was, I, I saw this contract in front of me and the, the contract said, okay, well, the, the rules of the society are very, are very clear. Mm. Uh, you are playing according to the rules means uh, you, you, you stop dreaming, you get both, both feet on the ground, uh, you go through school, you get your A-levels, you start your studies, uh, get your MBA or a, a nice law degree. And then you start working for a big one of the big four or uh, for for a, a nice law law firm, and you start your 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 career. Uh -huh. And then still there, you are you are applying. Of course, you continue to apply the rules of the society, and you are uh, uh, you you you're not only applying the rules um, that are officially uh, uh, written in a, in an HR book, but also the other ones that are unwritten and, uh, that you can't really find. Mm, yes. Yeah. So you are, you are playing, you are playing ball actually. And, yes. and this is exactly, exactly what I did. So I signed, when I was born, I signed this contract. And the funny part was that when I had this wake up moment, I, I read through this contract again and I realized that I have not even overlooked any um, small print or something. <laughs> it, it was simply like I delivered, the society delivered, so no one was in breach, <laughs> and, and and still I I felt a little bit I don't know there was a vacuum there was and something missing. There's a clause. There's a clause missing. Some the, the happiness clause was missing. Was it? Yeah, I exactly. And I mean. I, of course, now now I understand that uh, success uh, you can success define in, in, in different ways, and the way it was defined in that contract was simply based on uh, it was a material success, it was a financial mm -hmm. success. It was talking about uh, you know you, you you get a good compensation package and you have a good retirement pen, pension plan and you have your car allowance and and a health insurance, and name it, all these things that you can, with that, you can afford to buy a house, a nice car, a motorbike, mm -hmm. you can afford to raise a family and all that stuff. So in that respect, it was all fine, financially wise, all fine, but still there was something, uh, there was something missing. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a little bit my moment where I said, okay, probably, I need to rewrite this contract and I need to define uh, success in a, in a slightly different, different manner. So, so when, um, when did when you so I think I think that I've seen the um, the some of the early chapters of your book, the uh, your lighthouse journey, which is being published in the in the summer, sort of September 2019. And I love yeah. that analogy of the of the contract. And you're absolutely right. We all have one issued to us. In fact, our parents probably signed it for us actually, and then we just inherit it when we get to 18. But when did you? realize or did, did that light come on in terms of the lighthouse if you like that you can actually renegotiate the contract you can actually change the the clauses when did you have that level of sort of confidence and certainty yeah i i think i while i was that's kind of redefining this contract uh, rewriting this contract i also had this this picture in my mind or of a of a very strong building that I want to build and this building of course represents my my life that I, I wanted to rebuild my life actually I wanted to rebuild uh, a big and strong uh, house or building and as I am from uh, up north in, uh, in uh, Germany mm -hmm. uh, this I always was I was always fascinated by by lighthouses because mm -hmm. these these buildings are just not only uh, standing there rock solid and no matter how how rough it goes and how the storm is raging 
they're standing there rock solid, not moving. But not only that, um, they are always spending a guiding light. So yes. for me, this 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 lighthouse was always a very strong symbol for, on the one hand, being the reliable part uh, and and not only making sure that I can live my life uh, based on my terms that I will now uh, define myself. No, not only that, and I'm living since then a, a really a happy, joyful and abundant life, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Yes. Um, but then I also realized that, hey, that's only half of the of the journey because uh, a lighthouse that is not spending the guiding light uh, is is not worth anything. So mm -hmm. I also said to myself, well, now you have defined your life. You have rewritten your contract. Uh, you have learned a lot about value based living. Uh, you need to put this and structure it and you need, need to write it down mm -hmm. and then you by 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 sharing this with other people uh you can maybe help them help them also sure. uh, to raise to raise awareness and to help them to um uh yeah to to live a to live a better life it's, it's interesting well, funny made me smile i was doing a a workshop as you know on on friday and um i asked a question uh, over lunch i was talking to in, having a, a bite to eat with the people there some of the uh, participants and uh, this one guy was talking to me about you know visions and dreams and opportunities and things like that and i said to him i said well you know, for example what's your you know, what's your dream car what 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 car would you really like if you could and he sat and thought about it and he said he said an audi a4 turbo diesel and it's like <laughs> really i mean they, they are <laughs> Fabulous. I'm sure Audi A4 turbo diesels are, are, are fantastic, but it's the things, you know, such things as dreams. And I, and I remember, and I know you, you, you don't drive an Audi A4 turbo diesel, fabulous as they are, but you, you jumped out and you bought yourself the, the Mustang V8 convertible, which is not an accountant's car. You're not really allowed to have that. <laughs> but it, yeah. as you say, people, they, they, they read the contract they've got. And then they have the dream car of the, and I, I said to him, what color? And he said, oh, silver. It's like, crikey. There aren't many A4s <laughs> around that are silver. <laughs> yeah. No, you are, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is, but this is, it's an interesting, it's an interesting um, discovery when you are putting yourself into the situation that you take time out of your busy life and you start reflecting and asking yourself some questions. Yes. And my, one of my questions that I that I asked myself was, um, how much did they pay you to give up on your dreams? Mm, yes, love and, it. Yes. Yeah. And then and then that's and, and you put this you put this question out, and also means that you you need to answer it. And um, and then you start really thinking about okay, what is it really? What what really? Is, is important for me, what really matters to me and what really is it and what makes my heart sing. Mm. And, and then if you get clarity on these questions, um, that comes at a cost because you can't ignore it anymore. Mm, interesting. And, and you, 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 will take, you will take action because the moment you're thinking about it, you get clarity about it and your, your mind actually is circulating mm. about these things that you really want. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you you said it. The it's it's true. I'm I'm driving I'm driving a Mustang now, <laughs> and it's it's funny because I always had the idea I wanted to have this this V8 a convertible a Mustang with this nice story behind. Mm -hmm. You see, I I saw myself you know driving like Steve McQueen in 1968 <laughs> with this, with this fantastic uh, car in in, in the movie. Uh, I think it was called Barlet. Yeah. Um, but this is this is something where I said, but, but I never allowed myself. Mm -hmm. I never allowed myself to really think about it because yeah. this is what we learn. I mean, one of the rules is stop dreaming, get both both feet on the ground, and do what is necessary. Absolutely. So, so I really I was taught not to dream. So I didn't, I didn't dream. And when I then got clarity of what I want, of course, this Mustang is just one tiny little thing and uh, a puzzle piece. But I allowed myself to think about it 
and I put it on my paper as something that I would like to have. Mm -hmm. So I did it, and I mean, I there, there's a. I think I think you you said it once to me uh, that you have to be uh, careful with your thoughts. <laughs> yes, be careful. Be careful what you wish for. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, and and it is actually true um, because I in the meantime I learned that thoughts become things, mm. uh, and it's such a powerful message uh, to everyone who's now listening. And when you get clarity and you think about what you want, you automatically also think about what is necessary and what kind of actions do I have to put so that I achieve and get what I want mm -hmm. or that I, I be what I want to be. Yes. And, um, and this is, and actually my, my book, and you said it right, I mean, I'm, I'm writing this book, I started writing at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. uh, because it is not only helping me to structure uh, all that, what I went through, especially the last three, four years, but it's also it hopefully will help other people to and to to or it will, it will encourage other people to do the same to dare to think big to dare to think about things that they have never allowed themselves mm -hmm. and uh, i really want i really want to encourage and inspire people with that book and uh, yeah the plan is really to have it out uh, to be published uh, in september excellent and um uh, in the meantime, surely you will hear uh, left and right and center a few updates, a little, um, I don't know, I, I will publish a few things just to give an idea what's the content, content of that book. Uh, and uh, yeah, then in September I will surely have a little uh, celebration when the book is out. Uh, <laughs> That I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. That's excellent. True. Excellent. And I think, as you said, and I think, it, it, and I, I think you've experienced this, and I've experienced it as well. That people, we've all done it. You know, we visualize what we want, we want life to look like in terms of things we want, relationships to have, an environment, and everything like that. And it was explained to me that we, we watch this other movie. We watch a movie, an alternative movie of our lives. It doesn't reflect current reality. And yet so many people, they, they never make the leap from watching the movie to actually starring in it, writing their own screenplay and directing, producing and writing the score as well. And that's that leap from watching the alternative movie to actually being in it. I think that's something that by the sound of it that you've done, you know, you have now begun to write the screenplay, you've got the, the, the props, you've got the car, and, and you're beginning to live the movie that you visualized uh, some time ago. Yeah, and I, 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 realized, I realized that I was literally sitting in my own car, or my own life, mm -hmm. if you want. I was sitting in my own car on the back seat, in the back seat, <laughs> and I was complaining about the direction my car goes. <laughs> so it's, it is somehow a contradiction. It simply doesn't make sense. Sure. And you can, you can live your life like that for a certain time, but the moment you get clarity on what you really want, yeah, and you are that the direction that your your car is going is simply not the your direction. Sure, uh, you must you must your you, you get your buttocks up and put yourself in the driving seat, Absolutely. take the steering wheel, and really literally drive your life and being responsible for for your life. Yes. And that is so powerful because it is, it is a relief. I can tell you based on my own experience, it is a relief because out of the sun, you are in full control, mm. and that that's an amazing experience that you are not depending anymore uh, on on other people, on other situations, and you are you are no longer the victim of your environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's an incredible when you the moment you do it and you understand how powerful that is, uh, you are in full control. And of course, it comes as a, at a, a, a with a cost because, well, you can't blame anyone anymore. Uh, it's it's you are responsible and it's it's just fantastic. I mean, I I mean, since I, I did that step and I I'm really took responsibility and ownership of my life 
uh, it is probably the best, you know, no, not probably, it's, it's surely the best thing that I've ever, ever done in my life. Fantastic. Fantastic. And so this, you, I mean, your journey has been a very interesting, diverse and you know, very, very powerful one so far. Just very, you know, very quickly, what, what's the vision now? You t- we're talking of lighthouses and journeys and that sort of thing. What's the vision for, for, for Dirk Sander and the Enlightened Accountant now? Yeah, I, I said already. I'm a, I, I regard myself as a, as a student, as a, <laughs> a, a life, lifelong student of value-based living, and I'm convinced that uh, I'm here on this planet uh, to develop and to explore my best self. Uh, and then, of course, I, I definitely want to live up to it uh, on a daily basis and mm-hmm. shine a light for others so that they can also um, be more successful and be more in balance. Uh, with themselves um, that's that, that's definitely uh, one of my that definitely my, my vision um, and I because I I really want to be of of service I want to service other people I want to support other people and help other people to develop um, and this is even it, it sounds that that is very um, it is selfless of course sure but you can also call it uh, probably um, it's 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 a kind of wise self interest. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it does sound somewhat more compelling than an Audi A4 two liter turbo diesel in grey as, <laughs> as a vision and uh, yeah. life. And this is no no criticism of anybody uh, driving an Audi A4 turbo diesel two liter. Um, but there yeah. maybe is a higher purpose and passion in yeah. life that we can aspire to. So, so the, overall, and I, I, I know you're not, uh, you're not 25 years old anymore, but on your journey so far, um, which has been very, very successful, it's developing. I know you love the work you do now. You're working with a fabulous organization. But your, your, your top tips, people listening to this who maybe resonate with what you've been saying, they're feeling the same sort of way, they've got this contract, they want to change something or do something different. That, you know, what are the top, your top five tips or top five learnings that you could uh, uh, enlighten people with? Yeah, I mean, there are, I mean, I, I learned so many things about life and self-development the last couple of years. Huh. Um, it's always a challenge to really boil this down to, let's say, uh, five to ten top um, top tips. But I can, what I can surely say, five six things that definitely helped me to to become what I am today is first of all you need to get clarity on how you define success yeah uh, and you need to be also honest to yourself that success is not only can only not only be defined in financial terms yes uh, you can you can for I, I found myself success can be defined as the the number of uncomfortable communications uh, that you are willing to have in life uh, because that tells you that when I'm in uncomfortable communication means I am moving out of my comfort zone mm-hmm. yeah something that happens that happens that I've, I I mean we, we all know this the moment something new is comes around the corner we are afraid we think we can't deal with it but actually, it's exactly the opposite. The moment uh, you are standing in front of the next door and you don't know what's behind the door, of course, you are afraid. Uh, you, you might, and of course, immediately your brain tells you, no, don't open that door. It's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is exactly what I said. That's one of these crossroads in life. Yes. Your, your brain is throwing you tons of reasons why you should not open the door. Mm-hmm. But your heart tells you, open the door, it will be fun. Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's, 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 it's true, isn't it? Because these opportunities, um, fear and excitement is the same emotion. It depends on the, the approach or the perspective we take on it. I think once we yeah. turn the fear into, into excitement, um, it, it, it becomes, a, a, as you say, and it absolutely fits. I think it's a journey with different turns on it, not a blockage, and we can, uh, yeah, we can do these things. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it's always for me. Life is like a an, an unlimited number of rooms. Mm-hmm. When you are born, you're starting in room one, <laughs> and then you're going actually 
on a regular basis, you're standing in front of a new door. And the moment you dare to open that door, uh, surely you will develop. Yes. And that, and that is, that is an incredible feeling. Yes. And when you, when you do it, you need, I think the, the art is to turn the fear to not knowing what's behind that door, mm -hmm. that fear mm -hmm. needs to be translated um, into curiosity. Yeah, I think that that is maybe one of my my findings that is very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. The moment I have this strange feeling in my stomach is that oof, not sure whether I should go through that door. <laughs> I, that's a kind of indicator for me that I'm absolutely on the right track. Open that door; it will be fabulous. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think as well because I, I, I thought you were going to quote Forrest Gump there for a second with uh, "Life is like a box of chocolates," but it and it sort of is. <laughs> what, what I've seen, and, and again, I, th I know in the, the, the in your your journey and the things that you are doing, I think when when we uh, trust ourselves that you know whatever we find on the other side of that door. Um, it's going to be okay, you know. We, we can sort it. We'll fix it. We'll make the best of it, whatever it is. If it's not perfect, we'll work through it. And I think that level of, I suppose, confidence—that's the right term—that we can take the perceived risk of opening the door and walking through, and we'll it'll be okay. I think that's one of the it's, yeah. me and I see in other people as well. If we know and yeah. trust ourselves, well, you know, we'll sort it out. It'll be good. It'll be fine. Then that means we can sort of open to any any door we want. Yeah. No. It, exactly. I mean, this is. And that is something um, you, you said it. It's a little. It's a question of, of trust. Mm. And I mean, if for me, I said already. Okay, number one would be okay. Get clarity on what what success means to uh, to you. Uh, number two probably is you need to get clarity on who you are. Yes. Uh, and you need to be very clear what's important for you and what really matters to you. Yeah. Because that brings you into a position to to live an authentic life mm -hmm. and uh, i can i can share with you my the way i started my career mm -hmm. um, i always it was like a it was a, an unwritten rule for me that i had a prof i really separated my professional life from my private life mm, interesting I, I i don't know why i put this rule in, in into into my life probably this is because we are taught to do so. And I thought this is very, this makes perfectly sense. Of course, I have a, I am Dirk Sanden, the manager, when I'm working. And when I'm coming back, I'm Dirk Sanden, the private guy that has friends, takes, takes care of the family, etc. Yeah. Uh, until the moment I understood that this is the most craziest thing that I have ever done. <laughs> that was in the contract, uh, paragraph four, sub clause 2.3. Exactly, and I still, apply, I still applied it, and then I, I realized that Jesus Christ, it's impossible. I am Dirk. Yes. <laughs> Full I can, I can only be Dirk, and I'm Dirk uh, in a very authentic way uh, at work and in uh, also in my in my private environment. And I thought, I thought, I thought a little bit about uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, it's it's simply not working. You can't do this. But instead of instead of killing people during the night, uh, I actually was killing myself uh, all day long. Yeah, uh, and yes. that is something that we think. I think we we need to be clear on who we are, and then we need to be courageous and 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 stick to it and say yes, yes, this is how I am. These are my thoughts. We need to be courageous to stand up for it and to speak up. Um, and th that's important. Uh, I can tell you it's tough. Once in a while, you, when, especially when you stand up and speak up and you give, let's say you, you let down all your shields mm -hmm. and all the protection yeah. and you be yourself and you show vulnerab vulnerability. Yeah. Um, people see your real self. And I can tell you there are a few people that probably are not so happy with it. Yes, yes. But the, the flip side of the medal is there will be other people that you will attract in your life that are working or, or living based uh, on same values. Yes, absolutely. And, yes. And if you, you, you can't find these people if you're constantly wearing a shield and, and trying to need to protect 
yourself and, and, and playing roles and copying people and compare with others, it, it's, it's simply not, not working. Or, or as, as, as Oscar Wilde uh, famously said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but extre extremely good, extremely good point, extremely good point. <laughs> yeah. So that is that is maybe the um, well we started with how how to define success and and the second part was who you are yeah uh, you also sh should get clarity on uh, you need to find your why yes I th I think that's also important to really think about why uh, do I have my feet on the on the ground yes and what do I want to achieve in life um, it is actually what what helped me is a kind of technique to 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 visualize what's important for me. I mean, there's you can you can do if if the people that are listening now are not familiar with uh, the the vision board technique, mm. uh, they should look this up. Find find a local uh, consultant or coach who is doing this, especially the beginning of the year mm -hmm. when they're doing these vision board sessions. V vision boards are extremely helpful. Because as the, the term states, you visualize yourself in the future and mm -hmm. yeah. you put very strong images in your mind who you want to be, uh, what you want to achieve, uh, and also what you want to, to own and have. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I can't remember the lady, the, very, the smart lady once said, you can't be what you can't see. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah. And I think this this is what I what I really like because it's really powerful. You need to first put this picture in your mind and create it in your mind. And then as a second step, you put all the necessary action uh, so that actually you you achieve it. Or as, hmm. as Robin Sharma said, everything is created twice, once in your mind and then in reality. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that is that's maybe point number number three, or uh, if if you wish, and then what I realized is there is a let's call it a, a basic principle of life, a kind of assumption that we all should um, be be clear about. It's it's the the principle of the free will, mm -hmm. and I never really. Or well, I underestimated that. I was always, of course, of the opinion, well, I can, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the master of my thoughts, yeah, but I didn't really understand what that actually means. <laughs> uh, and it means that no one on earth can tell me uh, what I have to think. Uh, I can think whatever I want. I am the master of my thoughts. And that also means that I can create in my mind no matter what. Yes. So, so taking this very simple example, if I if I visualize myself and I think about myself as being the owner of a, a Mustang convertible V8, mm -hmm. and I see myself literally driving on a nice coastal road, sunny a sunny day, and I see myself driving, it I can tell you this is such a powerful thought mm -hmm. and a powerful image that after you have uh, you are motivated to do everything that is necessary to get it yes um, I also realized that um, as I think it was Einstein who said everyone has in principle only to answer uh, the, the the question how do I look at uh, the world is the universe for me a hostile place mm -hmm. or is it a friendly place yes it's another it's another of course one of the huge uh, conjunctions mm. uh, and together with the principle of the free will it's actually up to me if i think no no the universe my world is just fabulous it's full of opportunities and I can flourish in that environment, and I will meet the the people that uh, will help me on flourishing yes. and developing. <laughs> then this is my world. Yes. And if I'm thinking about this like that, 
this is how I create my world. I think it's what the, 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 the universe will play with us if we play with it. Exactly. And the question is, well, why are so many people think that they are living in a, in a, in a hostile place mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it's not so much fun to, to live in? Yeah. Uh, then if, if, you really, if you really think about it, it doesn't make sense. Because if I have the choice, well, I go for the, for the fun part or not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and uh, Doc, Dr. Wayne Dyer, he, he put it really in a, in a nice way where he said, um, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm, yes, and, absolutely. And for me, this is, this is not a, just a pure play, uh, a clever play on words. It is actually exactly that. Yes. Because I can, it's up to me, it's my responsibility. I am the master of my thoughts. If I think uh, that my neighbor sucks, well, my neighbor sucks. That is my reality. Yes. Yeah. But if I think... I hope, you, I, hope you, I hope your neighbors aren't listening to this just now, but still, there we go. <laughs> no, you see, but this is what I just said, because I my neighbor doesn't suck, because Excellent. I have a different mindset. <laughs> okay. Okay. And is your final, number five, final sort of gem to people to take away? Yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah, I mean... I realized that I have limited my thoughts and my my way of living mm -hmm. ex in an extreme way. And um, I had a kind of enlightened moment when I spent a nice long weekend uh, with my wife in, in Vienna. Uh -huh. uh, and what was interesting, you know, I mean, for people who haven't been there, but Vienna's know all this... Um, uh, for these nice wagons, these carriages that are pulled by these majestic, mm. beautiful horses. Yes. They're, they're pulling these ornate uh, uh, carriages through, this, through the streets of Vienna. And they're really looking beautiful. But while, while I was standing in front of one of these, these horses, I, just, I saw these, these blinkers that they have. <laughs> they're all wearing blinkers. Yes. Uh, just to make sure that they're not distracted and they keep on track and they only have this see this little spot just in front of them and uh, doing had this enlightened moment where i said it's isn't it interesting that we as human beings are actually living our lives to a certain degree at least the same way like these these animals these horses that are wearing the blinkers yes uh, yes good. if you think about it we are reducing our view so much and have only a very very limited view on what's what's possible mm -hmm. uh, and logically if i'm if i'm limiting my view like this i can't i can't simply see all these fantastic opportunities that life that life offers yeah so for me that was a clear picture that i don't want to live my life like one of these horses with the <laughs> blinkers i want to really get rid of my blinkers yes uh, to open my mind, to really have get a 360 degree on all the uh, uh, incredible possibilities that, mm -hmm. that that life has to offer, and um, this is something that I I definitely uh, uh, I'm living since then. I'm really living up to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I refuse to limit my thoughts and the possibilities, um, and it's it's a little bit like so far let's say you, you life is like a like a toolbox you know you have a couple of tools in in the box uh and you always think well i, I have a hammer and a nail so that that's great so i well i can i, I can use that hammer and a nail and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe if I'm, if I'm lucky i only i also have a, a saw and then you realize yeah but i want to drill a hole in the wall <laughs> yes so that, that that doesn't really help so mm. i think it's probably that uh, life should be really open up your mind uh get as many tools as you need mm -hmm. uh just to 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 really live up uh, to your to your uh, craziest dreams mm. uh, that you have so that that's maybe the, the next one get get rid of your blinkers excellent uh, get, a, get a full full view don't live the life as a uh, as a these these horses in in vienna and instead live a life of a of the the, the free mustang 
that is out there that can uh, I don't know live live the life without any barriers, with only uh, without any limitations. In, fa in fact, a V8 convertible Mustang would be good, wouldn't it? This is exact. I can the, tell you the, that. How, I, that how, how, how good are we at bringing together these stories and links in the in the podcast? Yeah. It's just genius, yeah. isn't it? And just very quick. I, I was sat on the uh, on the plane going down to the actually in, in Malta. And um, you've got sort of chatting away as you do to some people who want to have a chat on the plane. And, uh, and this guy was talking away. And I said to him, I said, what's the best thing about your job? He was t talking about what he was doing, this sort of thing. And he said, he said, the best thing about my job, he said, is the compensation package. And I said, well, you know, they, they, they call it compensation for a reason, which I think comes back to comes back to your point about how much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams. So we have to be careful of that. It's called compensation for a reason. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so okay. thank you. It's been entertaining, engaging, and informative. Thank you for your time. Um, your book is coming out in September again, uh, September 2019. Um, should people, and I'm sure they will, listening to this, they want to get in touch or connect or buy the book or have a conversation with you. How should people contact uh, Dirk Sand and the Enlightened Accountant? Yeah, that's that's pretty simple actually. Um, I, of course, you can you can find me uh, on on LinkedIn uh, and uh, on the German uh, network Xing. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Just type in Dirk Stand and you will find me immediately. Uh, you can of course also find me on my on my webpage yourlighthousejourney.com. Uh -huh. uh, you can drop me an email if you want Dirk dot at at yourlighthousejourney.com and well, for the for the people here in Luxembourg, um, if you want to get in contact with me, you can find me also on a Saturday in the morning in Oshaw when I'm doing my grocery. <laughs> <laughs> live, live that dream. Live in the dream in the Oshaw uh, doing the uh, grocery shopping on a Saturday morning. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you, Dirk. Thanks again. And anybody listening in, please uh, reach out to Dirk. Say thank you for his content. Uh, buy the book. Look for, look, look for updates. And if you're in Luxembourg, go to the Ocean Centre on Saturday. In you'll meet him <laughs> over the cabbages and that sort of thing. Have a discussion. So, Dirk, thank you again. Right. Really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned. We've got some more podcasts coming yeah. out. And uh, this has been fantastic. Dirk, thank you. Have a great weekend. And uh, I'll yeah. speak to you soon. And uh, bye for now. Thank you very much, David. It was a big pleasure as usual. See you. <laughs> I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye -bye. Ciao.